Hello everybody, it is Royal Panda here, and I am talking to you guys today about Jonah and the whale. So, we're going to talk about that today, and if you got your Bibles today, we are going to be in the book of Jonah, chapter number 1. Alright, so it says, in verse number 1 here, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, and the son of Anatai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. The great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up up before me verse 3 says but jonah rose up to flee unto tarsh from the presence of the lord and went down to joppa and he found a ship going to tarsh so he paid the fare there thereof and went down into it to go with them unto tarsh from the presence of the lord all right so we take these three verses and we see that jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh because God wanted him to go to Nineveh to preach to those people. And he didn't do that. He ran from God. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about is running from God. Okay, and I just want to say that it is uh, not good to do that, guys. You know, we see uh, down here later in the story what happens about Jonah. And for those of you that don't know, let me go ahead. Let me just go down through here real quick um and this this starts about verse let's see okay uh actually in chapter two it actually starts it talks about it says then jonah prayed unto the lord his god out of the fish's belly so that being said uh later on in this story what happened was jonah had uh, paid for the affair for a boat to go to another city to try to run from God, okay? Then they created, God created a storm in the water, and he, he, uh, he made it to where the ship couldn't go into the land. Couldn't go into the land because Jonah was on that boat. And the, the sailors, they found out about it, and, they Jonah told them that he was running from God, and they still did not want to throw Jonah overboard because if they threw Jonah overboard, overboard, they thought he would die, and then that would have been on them. You know, they would have murdered him. They would have felt like they murdered him and stuff like that. I guess, but uh, it says here in chapter one, uh, we're back in chapter one, guys. Verse number. Verse number seven, it says, and then, uh, and they said, every one to his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know of whose cause is evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Okay, so that's how they found out uh, who or what was causing the storm, which was Jonah. And then it says, then say they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. With it, what is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? Alright, let's see here. Verse 9 says, And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Okay? So, verse 10 says, Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. So Jonah told him, Jonah told him that he ran from God. You know, it says that they told him that he had told them. Uh, let's see, verse eleven says, "Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wroth and was temp tempestuous." Okay, and again, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I'm not big good with all these big words, so I'll probably mispronounce a lot of these words. Uh, these bigger words as we do this, but it'll be okay. Verse 12 says, And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. So Jonah's like, Okay, I want to, uh, uh, you guys have to throw me overboard. You know, if you guys throw me overboard, then the, the storm will be calm and you guys will be able to make it way safely. He says, and you need to throw me overboard because it's my fault. Well, verse 14 here we see it says, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech you, O Lord, we beseech thee. 
uh, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. Okay. So, let's see here. Give me one second here, guys. Okay. So, verse 14, it says, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, and said, Oh, no, I just said that, sorry. Verse 15 says, So they took up Jonah, and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. So, we see in verse uh, 13, um, the verse 14, Hold on. Verse 13, we see, it says, Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wroth and was tempted against them. So, there we see that after Jonah told them that you had to cast him over the sea, they still didn't. They tried, and they tried, they tried to not cast him into the sea and try to just row it into the land. But, we see in that last, that last part of that verse that it didn't work. So then, verse 14, we see that they're talking to God, and they say, Lord said, uh, you know, uh, don't kill us for this man's life and don't, don't hold us accountable for, you know, for this, for Jonah's life is what they were saying, you know, for Jonah dying, for them throwing him overboard. But little do they know that God's plan is not for Jonah to die. Uh, of course, that's just, that's what they think, you know, they, uh, cause we don't, we don't know what God's plan is, you know, we don't know the big scale of it, you know, they only see that Jonah's going to be cast to the sea and he's going to die. Uh, they don't see that later on Jonah's going to get swallowed up by the well, then Jonah's going to be brought back and later go to Nineveh. So, you know, that's just really what, how, you know, that's really how great God is, really is, because, you know, we see that, you know, we see, like the sailors, we see just what we see. You know, God sees the big picture. God sees the wide scale of things, you know. Um, we only see a little bit. And that's something I want to talk about you guys today. Uh, let me finish up this chapter real quick. We've got a few verses here, and then I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys for a minute. But uh, 15 says, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. So when Jonah got cast to the sea, the storm stopped, the sea became calm and verse 16 then the men feared the lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the lord and made vows now i want you to notice this here <laughs> these people uh this these people on the ship they all they they basically came to god is pretty much what it was it says that the men feared the lord exceedingly now when you see the word feared you really have to read about what that feared means because you know there's the fear like scared fear right like uh, I have a fear of heights, so I'm scared I'm scared of being really, really high up, uh, like on a ladder or something, uh, looking down from a high place. It's kind of, you know, uh, a little scary, but there's also another fear, and that's like fear, and you hear people say fear of the Lord, you know, that's not talking about getting like under a table or, you know, getting in a corner and being scared of God. It's being kind of in awe of God, you know, like there there might be a little fear there, but it's not like, Oh, you know, God's just so scary. It's like, man, God can do this, you know. I mean, it's just, it's really, uh, it's what it really is. It really is just like in awe uh, of just how powerful and how great, you know, God is. So that's what these men are doing. They, they, uh, they came to God and it says that they offered sacrifices unto the Lord and made vows. So the Bible doesn't say specifically, but I like to think that because of what Jonah done and because of what God was doing, um, it really showed them that, you know, their God, that Jonah's God, you know, our God is the one true God. And they came over to, and they, they, they came to know God. And they, that's why they say that they made sacrifices to the Lord and they made vows. So uh, when you make a vow, what is it? You pretty much, you have to make a promise, right? And I'd like to think that they, they made a promise to serve God and to follow God. Uh, you know, because earlier in the chapter, and I guess I skipped over that verse, I didn't mean to do that, but um, it said that they, um, it talked about their gods that they worshipped. Um, right here in verse 5, verse 5, it says, 
Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his god, and cast forth the wares that were on the ship at the sea, that it may lighten it. Okay, but it says, But Jonah had gone to the sides of the ship, and he lay, and he was fast asleep. But what I want you to point out is that it said, Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his god. Now when you see that, God is lowercase. That means that they're doing a false god. They're they're praying and they're they're worshiping a false god. You know, not the one true God, the God that we worship, but the God of the world, right? The God, gods, the fake gods. You know. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's go and finish up this chapter here. Let's see, verse sixteen. Nope, verse seventeen says, "Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah." And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Okay, so I'll probably finish this with you guys next week, but I want to go ahead and talk about God's plans, you know, about what God does, right? Because Jonah, he tried to run from God, right? Well, at the end of the story, Jonah comes out of the belly of the well, and he ends up going to Nineveh. And so what happened was he goes to Nineveh, he preaches to those people, and then God uses that to save all of those people. You know, he saved them, uh, you know, from living in torment, and uh, he, he, he used Jonah as a messenger to, or as a preacher to get his word out there, Okay. Now, if Jonah would have done that from the beginning, he never would have had to go through all that he went through. He had, he, but he had to, I guess he had to be humbled. Or, uh, and, you know, sometimes we have to do that, you know, because our pride and because our, because our, our way of thinking or something like that will uh, cause us to not do something that God wants us to do. You know, uh, I, was a, I, was, I was called to preach at a real young age. I was called to be a preacher when I was 16 years old. And some people would tell me, like, you know, oh, 16 is too young to be a preacher. You know, you got your whole life ahead of you. But from what I read and studied, my Bible was, you know, like, I know, because I, I, I knew even then it was best to answer the calling of God before, you know, and not try to run from it, you know, because I've heard other preachers talk about how they tried to put off their calling and they had to, and, you know, they tried to just put it off, put it off, and, you know, things would happen in their life that they knew, they just knew that it was because that they were not answering the calling of God. And let me tell you guys something. Answering the calling of God is just such a blessing. It really is. I've had a blessing every time I get behind the pulpit, every time I preach the word, you know, I get a blessing out of it just as much as anybody else does. So I want to encourage you guys that if God's calling you to do something, uh, don't run from it. You know, do not don't run uh, from God because God knows where you are. God knows where you're going and God knows what's best. You know, I can, I just want to leave with that was that God knows what's best for you guys. And for, for me, because like I said, he sees all, he sees the big picture. We only see a little small of it. You know, think of it like a parade. Okay. We're standing there watching a parade and we see a little section of it. You know, uh, uh, we see this little section. God sees beginning all the way to the end of the parade. But we only see this little part. We can't see the beginning and we can't see the end. Right? So that's all I wanted to say with you guys today. That's all I want to talk to you guys today. So I hope you guys got a blessing out of this video. I hope you guys that uh, may be struggling with a little something or another. I pray for you guys. I pray for uh, all you people out there that just need a little encouragement. Maybe a little bit of a... Uh, you know, a little bit of happiness in your life, you know, I pray for you guys, I pray, you know, because, and I pray for everybody, you know, I pray for everybody, I don't care, uh, like me and one of my buddies was talking about yesterday was, you know, he was giving me some prayer requests, and he says he hated loading me down, I said, hey man, you know, load me down with him, because even though I may not remember all the prayer requests that I get, I know God does, and I know I, me just praying for, you know, all the prayer requests that I get, and everything like that, I know God knows what they are, so, Guys, I hope and pray that you guys got a blessing out of this video. And guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you guys want, there is some video game videos that 
you guys might enjoy with some new Switch stuff and all that. So hopefully you guys get a blessing out of that too. I hope you guys enjoy it. God bless you all and goodbye.